Happy to be here. Uh, this is a really great product. And I will focus more on how to do it instead of just the focus on the radar changes. So I will go more into the details, showing people how we have been making it fun to get things done uh, in 130 countries in less than six months. So what is Symphonical? Symphonical is a digital wall with yellow notes that makes it simple to work together. You could start without any columns or rows or colors. You know, everybody knows how to operate a yellow note. And that's how people love to work. We know that because we've done research. And then you can say, okay, what is important? You color code that. Who's responsible? Put a, co uh, a row for that. What kind of progress? And you put lines. And, and, and you can customize that. So this is a kind of an information pivoting table. And when I came in, uh, the company was in pretty bad shape because I was uh, the investor. Uh, I'll, I'll go quickly through that because we already said that it's going to be fun and productivi productivity. Um, when I came in, we needed to restart. We had a company that was growing at a 50% growth rate, about to make money. And the first thing I did when I came in as a CEO was stop doing that. Uh, we stopped from selling it to giving it away. We then changed everything, so we made everything simpler by a time by a factor of ten. So now we have one tenth of the f uh, of the functionality. So we see here we needed to refocus on the product to make it easy, to make it fun. That's the, the thing here, and. Changing the business model was not easy. Taking the revenue stream away as the first thing, as I did, from selling it to start giving it away, because we saw that it couldn't scale. That was the problem. So this is nothing, you know, like everybody wants to get new customers, want to keep them, and want these customers to invite others, and then how to make money on that. So that is the, and for each of these, we had what we call strategic initiatives. And then we had an ideation process. And I'll go into that more into details, because I think how we did it is even more important than what we did. The second one, once we had done that, after the first one, developing the product, we saw we needed to go more into the platform. We needed to build the process and relationship. And by doing that, we joined a relation with a small company called Google. Um, and our wall was a nice wall where you could work together. But together with Google, we made what we call Google Hangout, where you can have a video conferencing. Once you get into the video conferencing system, you click on one of the apps. We're one out of 15 apps globally. And then you see the wall with people below, and the, the top level is symphonical, and the bottom level then is video conferencing, where everybody can see what everybody else are doing and talk to each other at the same time. That means we took a traditional way of working, which I'll come back to, yellow notes on digital wall, on, on walls, taking that into the digital wall, digital world, and saying to people, it doesn't really matter where you are now. You can work together and everybody can see what everybody else are doing, like it used to be. That's how it was fun before. So to do this, we had five steps from the ideation to the follow-up in within each of these strategic areas. And I'll come back to that. We defined the strategic areas where we needed to grow. Platform, communication, value capture, channel, and partnerships. For each of these areas, we brainstormed. What can we do? What is all the possibilities we can do, for instance, for the platform? Then we structured all the IDs. Which one, which of these IDs are most fun for our users? Because we want things to be fun. We know that fun drives productivity. Which one is the easiest for us to do? And what is the most effective for us to do? And then we defined, you know, up in the left corner, we see which one it is. And then we followed up on that. And then who does what when is the key point. So I'm going to take you through how we did that. You will see this is one 
of the processes with Christian, excellent uh, consultant, doing wonders for us. You can see we had four uh, similar charts for our competitors to give us the impression how are we compared to the others. And then we were sitting with physical yellow notes, writing down, and these are people from Russia, Pakistan, India, China, and Norway, and we have also one from, China, uh, from, uh, from Switzerland now, so it's a small team, but from all over the world. Uh, we were sitting there, and then as we were writing, somebody was taking them up, becoming digital notes, and then we started to work on those notes in a structured process to go from ideation to structure to follow up. And instead of having 12 lines, you could see here that we had, how do you focus on that? You could see here we had the relationship innovation, offering innovation, and so. So we had the four instead of 12 to make it easier. And this is who has been, and you see the colors are representing which one in the company is responsible for what. And when it's ticked off, it means that somebody has done it. Uh, follow up on how we did the, uh, the, the process of innovation. Remember we said it should be easy, it should be fun, and it should be effective. So one axis is easy, the other is inno effective, and then uh, fun. And then the ones who are green up in the left corner, those are the ones we said, okay, these are the combination of everything we need. And those were put into a calendar with names on it and a time on it. That means we were able to drive process really, really structured from the big picture into each strategic initiative, creative, structure, follow-up, time after time after time. And since we are a creative company, we put the background of the innovation radar into our walls. So now we can drag the notes, the digital notes, into those areas. So it's really, really visual, to put it that way. But to make it even more visual, I'm just going to keep track of time. I'm still doing good. We are doing this in a visual way because we were talking about how to get people to follow our advice. And this is our last one. And this is my desk and everybody's desk. And this is hanging on top of my desk all day, every day, with the definition below, because some of the things were, what does these mean? So we need to have a written, what is each of these uh, dimensions meaning for us? So it's really, really uh, objective, or, or and you can see we have using the physical yellow notes as well. And we can see uh, we're working on the platform. That means we're going on mobile, we're going on cell phones, we're going on pads, uh, we're developing templates, we're developing ad support because it's free and it always will be free. Christian, you've asked about that. But for some users, we will have a premium solution. And thinking of partners, we have a great partner in Google. And as you can see, we're still talking to some other big players because that's how we can grow globally. So how can we make money? It's free, but we make ads and we have monthly subscriptions, templates and apps. And this is one of the most important discussion we had because this is really business development and business model. How can we make money? We still haven't decided 100%. We're debating in the board back and forth. Should we pay for apps? We have decided not to. That was last week's decision uh, because we wanted to be spread and to sit there and discuss how can we be innovating in pricing models and business models. That is really, really hard. So how has it gone so far? I think you mentioned something about 10% growth a year is good we're 8% a week. Uh, that means every 10 week we double our customer base these days, uh, So, which is uh, pretty nice growth to us. We have uh, so far 130 countries covered, translating it more and more into 
different languages. Last week, an Italian guy came and said, hey, can I translate this into Italian? Because I wanted to. So last week, he translated it. We gave him a link. And now we have it in Italian. That's how the network economy works. Our free customer paid, didn't get paid to translate for us. So let me tell a little bit to sum up my experience. I really love this concept. It's really well thought of theoretical. It's practical. It's easy to understand. I'm, I have two different consultants, and they were both excellent. And of course, it's a lot for money, because it's free. Uh, even though it's not free, you all know that. We have to spend a lot of resources. So even if it's free, it's not free. What I would like to be different is that there is, should be a benchmark ideation database. Uh, between the processes, there were too little involvement from the consultants, but I think that's a part of the concept as well. So I, but that's what I would like to have more discussion on a basis. Uh, and to follow up is probably another thing that I would like to say. Okay, Bjorn, you've been working now for two months. What have you been done since last time? Kicking my ass a little bit. You know, that would be good. So the more hands-on, define and follow up, follow up in meetings. You know, we did that, but I think it's really important after the meetings, okay, now you had this, who's doing what after these meetings? And build relevant benchmark, what's being done and what really works. And of course, I couldn't resist put the last one in. Choose a modern collaborative platform to make it fun to get things done. Thank you. All right, so let's open it up. Any questions regarding giving your product away, 8% growth per week, or having fun getting things done? There's one over here. I would like to know uh, how important has this MI instrument been in uh, assisting your company in this uh, large success we compared to other models? Yeah. Uh, I have been working with research all my life. I started first a market research company and then a market research software, and I'm, I live and breathe for research. So, so I, I'm kind of knowledgeable about different models. But I, I really like that you have, I shouldn't say the simplicity, but the simplicity is, is in the visuality. It's, it's really easy to see where you are going. You know, we had to develop the product first, and that's when it looked like a halfway fish, you know, without a tail. Uh, and, and then once we developed into different strategic missions, we wrote it up, put it up on a wall, and discussed it. And since we are so small, it's easy for me to implement the changes that we have agreed. It's easier for me than for a company with a thousand employees. I, I realize that. But if you don't know where you're going, hey, and this helps us. Uh, finding out where to go. And I, the first one was not as good because we hadn't gotten into it, but the second and the third was giving more and more value every time, in my opinion. So I really like the, the concept and the principle behind it. Do we have one in the back and one in the front, and then we're gonna move on with Gudmundur. Uh, thank you very much, it was uh, extremely interesting, um, your presentation. I just have a question. This this turnaround uh, over the last couple of years, um, where did you get your revenue in the, the meantime? Because uh, now you can add ads or, or premium membership and all that, but it takes a it takes a while to get that uh, running up and running. So for for the last yeah. couple of years or months, who paid you or did you pay yourself? Do you have deep pockets? Um, yeah. I, I came in as issue. a. I, okay, I have to give a little bit background because uh, one of the companies I founded was uh, <coughs> Confirm It, which became uh, stock listed in Norway. Uh, so I have some cash, and I, I initially invested half a million dollars. Now I've invested a million dollars, and it's starting to hurt. You know, mm. uh, so we have external investors, but you know, it's not really easy to give things away for a long time. Uh, so we are really into that next phase now, how to make money short term. And, uh, but you have to have, uh, we, it's, I'm not the only investor. Uh, we have some investors, but you have to have a long term vision on this. But you still, if you have too much money, it, the money doesn't really matter. So we could continue for a long time. So we really have to be struggling. So we're having uh, many f 
uh, small share issues. So it's not that we have a big war chest of millions of dollars in it. You know, how can we get through the next quarter, next quarter? Because it keeps us uh, hungry uh, for how to, how to survive. Because we don't know until the next time if the investors are willing to give us the next carrot so we can run. Shortage of cash provides a good deadline, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we have Getting one coming up done. in January. It's the next one. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. So, uh, guy over here, the last one, and then we will continue. Short question. Uh, Lars Erström, one of the Swedish consultants. Uh, it seems to me that you have very much adopted the strategic thinking of the innovation radar. Uh, do you plan to continue using that, the, the model with the 12 dimensions? You saw that wall? Where is it now? It's still hanging there. This is it. It's hanging there on the wall today. And uh, some of these notes came up uh, three or four days ago. So every time we change it, we agreed. You know, we don't follow it, you know, 100% because we have some different strategic initiatives that is in little side. But we try to convert it into this model and then hang up the notes. And you see that we don't have notes in any every direction. We have them on, you know, the value capture now. We have them on, on communication platform and, of course, on the ecosystem where we want to be a little fish in a huge pond. And so far, we've been succeeding on that. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you.